Okay, so I have a literature degree, which means that I am constantly tempted to overuse the, the ancient, ancient symbol, symbol of the, the Ouroboros. Ouroboros. Isaac. Ouroboros, you are what you eat. Move, move your stuff. That's the one where the snake or sometimes the dragon, but usually the snake is eating itself in a circle. And despite the auto cannibalistic overtones, this symbol is usually used as a good thing because it's like about like rebirth and regeneration and stuff. It's like, oh no, winter is so cold and deathly and stuff, but it's all good because everything will come back in the spring. Okay, so that is not the version of the ancient, ancient symbol, symbol of the, the Ouroboros that we will be looking at today because uh, the, the fashion industry is eating itself. Let me put something in perspective for you. Do you know how many days per year are Fashion Week days? So if we count the big four, east to west, we have New York Fashion Week, we have London Fashion Week, Milan Fashion Week, then Paris Fashion Week. But there is also a separate men's week for each of those weeks. So there's still New York, London, Milan, Paris, men's week, totally separate of that. And there's also Couture Week in January and July, and that's a whole separate thing, and it'd be crazy if we left that out. So basically, there are about 120 days that could be officially called, in the strictest sense of the word, Fashion Week days out of the year. You could wake up every single day and go, Happy Fashion Week, and you would be right a third of the time. And for the record, the number 120, that doesn't even take everything into account. There is Tokyo Fashion Week, there's Copenhagen Fashion Week, Berlin Fashion Week, Los Angeles Fashion Week, Miami Swim Week. Most major cities in the world have a Fashion Week. It is literally always Fashion Week somewhere at any given time. There's like a whole separate episode that we could do about the development of the runway show throughout history, but we're just gonna save that for a different time. Today we are just going to focus on how the f we got into this incredibly chaotic artificial treadmill of a system. And I will say, is lighting still okay? Yeah. And I will say, I, I am making this video for the benefit of the fashion designers themselves. Me personally, Daniela, we love this shit. Like, there is no reason for us as the audience to be like, ugh, this is exhausting. Drink some coffee or go to bed earlier. This is really not that difficult. But for designers, this system is insane. The crazy pace that we keep up with now in fashion was developed at a time when fashion was about something totally different. It was just about beauty. Like, think in your head, how many brands are doing just like raw, just no, no filter, no anything else. It's just, wow, what beautiful clothes. I can't really think of any brands doing that other than maybe Pierpaolo's work at Valentino Couture. Other than that, I'm not really sure I can think of other brands that are just doing beauty and also incredibly popular. Pierpaolo seems to be like king of beauty right now. But for the most part, brands are trying to do some kind of complicated artistic message with their shows. It's not just make things beautiful. And there was a time when just making beautiful things was all that you needed. Beauty is beautiful, everyone likes it, but it is fairly one-dimensional. It's much easier to come up with new ideas for what beauty is or what beauty could be. It becomes more about technical skill of crafting a dress than about having a vision or some kind of artistic idea or statement. I mean, there is nothing about what Hubert de Givenchy, Cristobal Balenciaga, or Madeleine Vianney were doing that was easy. It's just that it was completely different. And today, designers are being pressured into doing way too much. Like, make high quality product, create a brilliant vision for a runway, do it again in six months, and hey, don't be lazy. You should have developed at least three new textiles for this season. And back in the day, there, there was certainly no pressure to put on an incredible runway show. Fashion Week was very literally just a trade show at one time. Like, nobody was clamoring, most people at least were not clamoring to go into them, and they evolved over time into this just crazy art form that is this huge public spectacle, and people do want to go to them because they're fucking awesome. Point being that the pace of fashion here was developed at a time when conceptually and logistically things were just much easier to do. Like, oh yeah, we'll show in the spring, we'll show in the fall. That'll be fun every six months. That's a, that's a pretty good pace. Now, showing in the spring and the fall is unrealistic for most of these brands anyway, but on top of that, we have added in cruise, pre-fall, we've added in resort. Some brands now show men's week as well as women's week, and then they add in stuff like cruise and pre-fall on top. They're like making a collection every five fucking weeks. And while I know that a lot of smaller brands aren't keeping up with the every five weeks thing, like I realize that there's almost no small companies that are actually doing that, there is this pressure of like, well, why aren't you doing that? 
to which fashion designers might reply that they are expected to pay their factories before the factory even sends a bill to the huge companies that the manufacture through them. And then additionally, they're expected to be the first ones delivering to stores, even though they can't get first in line for the manufacturing because they're expected to pay first, but also they're gonna get manufactured last. Like nothing about anything in this system, especially for small designers, makes any sense. Everything is backwards. The ancient symbol of the Ouroboros. I mean, we, we recently spoke to Yan Yan Vanessa during Paris Fashion Week, and he told us that he was embarrassed. He said the word embarrassed. He said he was embarrassed when he showed at Pity Womo because they had to show a lot of repeat styles in that show. Just a very quick, dirty summary here. Pity Womo is kind of like a fashion week, but you have to be invited. You can't just pay your way in. They have to invite you to show. So being a part of Pity is a really big deal. It's, it's a pretty big honor. But Yan Yan had already finished the collection by the time he was invited by Pity. And so they were like, hey, we want to invite you. And he was like, obviously, I'm not going to turn that down. Ugh, I've already developed the collection and the collection has a lot of repeat styles. That's so embarrassing. The whole reason I'm bringing this up is because it is insane that Yan Yan Vanessa would feel embarrassed about anything because as far as this fashion critic is concerned, Yan Yan and his partner Pietro are running a perfect fashion brand. They develop tons of their own textiles with different mills. Some of their textiles are developed in their studio, handwoven on a loom. Name me one other brand that has a loom that gets used every season in their home studio, like in the headquarters. Name one other one. Most of their prototypes are made in studio. Most of the patterns are drafted by hand by their employees in the studio. Like, I didn't even mean to do this, but I am wearing two things by Yan Yan today, which I actually do think kind of demonstrates like how much designers are doing to still be able to say something like, I feel embarrassed that we had to repeat styles, which is just crazy to me. The first is these pants, which I now refer to as my slime pants because they have a heavy coating of wax on them and they're kind of translucent and they feel kind of clammy when you touch them. These pants, among many other pieces from the brand, reflect the vision of what Yan Yan imbues into his clothes. There's an honest voice in these clothes that is distinctly Yan Yan's. Also, these were Daniela's wedding present to me, so they're very special. Additionally, I have this hat from them. The hat is made from yak wool. When I asked Yan Yan about it, he said, oh yeah, we get the yak wool from this couple that we're friends with who own a bunch of yaks in Mongolia. We don't even use dyes for it. The properties of pure yak wool are pretty incredible. Okay, so it was that guy who said, I'm so embarrassed because we've seen some of these styles before. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. Like you do such an excellent job. Another person we've spoken to recently is Julius Jewell from Helia DeMille. Their team is trying to do the right thing and develop their own textiles. Like the fucking awesome liquid metal pants. Those are something that they developed in collaboration with a mill. No other company has that textile other than them. I should, I should get the jacket. I just looked so cool when I was like taking it off. I looked like uh, like Tyler Durden from Fight Club. But Julius explained to us, and this was so interesting to me, it opened my brain up a whole bunch. He explained that developing a textile is not just a start and then an ending thing. Once you've developed the thing and it goes into a product, especially if that product does well, you want to keep perfecting it. You're gonna go back to the mill and say like, I wanna, I wanna tweak it a little bit to make it better. I have an idea, let's try this. And he's like, you keep doing new iterations of that stuff, but it's really hard to do that. I'm obviously paraphrasing what he's saying here, but he said it's really difficult to do all of that if you're expected to present a completely new idea in your runway every six months. Some things just take time to develop. So, and, and it is worth knowing here that we have extended interviews with both of those gentlemen on the Patreon along with a shit ton of other interviews. I'm swearing so much in this episode. We're like reverting back to 15 year old bliss. A shit ton, a metric fucking shit ton of other interviews and extended episode, exclusive episodes. You get to join the private Discord server. The Patreon is so excellent. Join the Patreon, it's the best. Habibi. Join the Patreon today. All right, so this issue of working too fast has even inspired an entire collection, which I'm sure has an official pronunciation. I'll just say avavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavavav
that would just make for worse movies, I think. And granted, there are some designers who thrive off of these insane expectations. Rick Owens shouldn't change a damn thing. I don't know how those people are able to make such consistently good work so often, but the formula needs to stay unchanged, please. It's just a lot of pressure when the powerhouses set the standard and then small businesses have to keep the same pace. And I mean, like, for example, we saw a number of designers break off from this fashion month and just take a break this time. There was Tebe Magugu that did that, Delara Findikoglu, Lacanio Madingi did that, and Awake Mode just sat this season out. And you know what? None of them lost their businesses over it. They're okay. They're just sitting this one out. They'll be back next season. And for smaller designers, I don't even think we need to switch to like three years between runway shows or anything crazy, but I personally wouldn't mind if designers only showed once per year. Like, hell, show me everything from coats to t-shirts, all four seasons in one show. Let's do it. And that's not even to say that the system itself should change. I think that we, like the journalists and stuff, should be going to fashion month every three months or so. It's just that the, the season shouldn't always look exactly the same, the exact same names every single time. There should be people who go in and try out Fashion Month and see how it works for them and then might decide that they're just going to do it off calendar for the rest of their existence. And then designers that just come in, go out, and then the major houses can show every single season like they always have. I just wish that there was a little bit more variety and that people felt like they could choose what they're doing rather than like, you're either on the treadmill or you're fucking dead. There's no hope for you because you're not showing every single season. And again, I do not want to overuse the ancient, ancient symbol, symbol of the Ouroboros. Us. But you might understand why I feel tempted to do that. Either the pace needs to slow down, or we need to stop expecting designers to completely reinvent themselves every six months, or heaven forbid, every three months. It's ridiculous. Maybe, I don't, maybe this is just part of the job. Like, maybe this is one of the hazards of the medium of fashion design. Like, Television shows have to get funding based off of the first episode. So the first episode of TV shows is always full of exposition and horribly written dialogue. Movies have such gargantuan budgets that they avoid risks at all costs, so most movies end up looking the same. Video games, for some reason, have been stuck at the price point of $60 for the last 40 fucking years with no adjustment for inflation, so they're having to work with these unbelievably tight shoestring budgets. Maybe every medium of art just has some special curse to it that makes it borderline impossible to do anything artistic or interesting. Maybe life is just really fucking hard. Maybe the system was created like this and the status quo remains so firmly in place because the only brands who can truly function under this kind of pressure are ones that already have hundreds of employees and hundreds of millions of dollars to spend. But in the meantime, here's a list of some small companies that are doing excellent work under the pressure of this current system. We listed some above in the episode. These are some other ones. List some more in the comments because this is not a complete list. Mame Kuraguchi, Ruohan, Meryl Rogue, Grace Wales Bonner, Bianca Saunders, Nancy Dojaka, Ed Maynor, Ira, Litkovska, Botter, Ziggy Chen, Uma Wang, Winnie New York, Aria, Elena Velez, Knowles, Matra Pierre, Veillant, Peter Doe, Boyarovskaya, Rock. I love you a lot. Go join that Patreon. Peace. They're so swishy.